What happens if you step in poo? Today I'm going to be telling you about my experience wearing these 3D printed shoes. These are some shoes that Creality sent over to me. You can see there's a little Creality logo right there. Now you might think it's odd for Creality to send me a pair of shoes without any explanation of where they came from or why they're sending them to me, but it's pretty on brand for Creality to send me things that I don't need, want, or ask for. So I can't say I'm surprised that these showed up. Now when I first got these, I thought this was some kind of cruel joke. If you know anything about the Midwest or the Great Lakes area in the winter, it was frickin' cold outside. All the sidewalks are wet, frozen, or salted, so wearing a perforated pair of 3D printed shoes really didn't seem like a good idea. But now the weather has warmed up a little bit, and I'm actually on vacation here down in sunny San Diego, and uh, we're gonna wear these around and see what it's like. And what I think I'm gonna do to thoroughly test these shoes out is just use them as my one pair of shoes for this entire trip. So I'll be wearing them indoors, outdoors, around town, you know, various places and conditions, and we'll see how they hold up. Before we get into my practical experience wearing these shoes, let's kind of go over my first impressions and the materials and design of these things. They're made out of this kind of squishy green plastic. You can see I can just squish it by hand here. So it's not the firmest material. That's actually kind of ideal for comfortable footwear. Um, it just kind of will give you that walking on clouds kind of feeling. Just at a glance, you can tell these are built with some kind of lattice pattern. So there's tons of holes in this. That helps make them a little bit squishier and uh, kind of shows off the capabilities of 3D printing technology. It's really easy to make these kind of volumetric shapes compared to traditional manufacturing technologies. You can kind of see the light through them. So they're pretty perforated, which has some pros and cons. Pros, they have great ventilation and comfort. Uh, cons, you miss out on a little bit of protection that you might want on shoes, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Before we get into my experience wearing these 3D printed shoes around town and traveling, I want to get into my first impressions about them and just kind of what I thought about these when I took them out of the box. The first thing about them that I noticed is they kind of stink. And this isn't because I've been wearing them. These kind of smell like uncured resin or some kind of solvent. So that kind of initially put me off a little bit. If you're going to be designing and selling 3D printed products, especially ones that people are gonna wear and you know you might wear these barefoot and have them in contact with your skin, that scent of plastic is a little unsettling. Initially, I just set these aside and just let them sit out on a table for a couple weeks or a couple of months even, but there's still definitely a little bit of a, like a plasticky smell to them. If you've been around resin 3D printers, you should be pretty familiar with the smell. But the best way I can describe it to someone who hasn't experienced it is it's kind of like that new car smell, but about five times more intense than anything that you'd consider pleasant. So yeah, just a little stinky. I will say that after wearing them for a couple of days, the smell has been kind of tapering off pretty rapidly. So we'll see if they still smell in a couple of weeks, but for now, that's just like one thing that is a little troublesome. I'm guessing this material is some kind of UV cured resin it's softer than pretty much any TPU that you'd print out of a traditional 3D printer. You know, the kind that uses a spool of filament and like squishes the molten plastic out. And you can see some 3D printing artifacts here. You can actually see the layer lines. And uh, on the bottom here, you can see some pixelization, so kind of rastered edges. Uh, rasterization is when you try to draw a diagonal line using pixels, you end up having like a bunch of little sharp corners when you zoom in a lot. Um, I guess the technical term for this would be voxelization. So voxels are just three-dimensional pixels and you get like kind of jagged edges. It looks like these shoes were built in Minecraft just because the resolution of the machine is like individual blocks. But on other areas, it's extremely smooth. Like when you put your foot in these shoes, you're gonna be touching this rim here so they've kind of gone in and done some post-process smoothing on this, I'm pretty sure. So this could have been someone with like a brush and some solvent just kind of wiping that down and uh, knocking down those edges. Or they could have come in here with sandpaper or something to improve the look and feel of the parts that are going to be in contact with your foot. That'll help in a number of ways, just making it so that the surface doesn't feel so rough. Also, it's a sanitization issue. Like, uh, you can't really clean surfaces that are super rough, so you want a smooth surface in those areas where it's touching your foot. In terms of the hardness or squishiness of this material, it's pretty similar to like a pencil eraser. So on the shore hardness scale that's used to describe rubbers and plastics, 
95A is about the squishiest material that you can print on our standard 3D printer. So softer than a car tire's tread, firmer than a rubber band, and about the same as a, uh, a pencil eraser. I wonder if I could use these to erase some stuff. And yeah, that's just, that's very reminiscent of erasing pencil on paper. So, you know, it's kind of got that eraser kind of feel to it. Also, this lattice pattern is very complex. They definitely use some kind of specialty software to generate it. Now, once upon a time, I got a master's degree in mechanical engineering, and I was specifically focused on applications of 3D printing technology in engineering and designing things. So lattice materials was like a hot topic back then, and it still is today. I could give you a 24-hour lecture on the pros and cons of lattices, but in general, I think this is a pretty good application where you're getting kind of unique material properties and you're taking advantage of the 3D printing process. Because at the end of the day, you can make a pair of flip-flops for like a dollar using traditional foam and nylon straps and that kind of material. So if you're gonna be using a different process like 3D printing, it's probably gonna be quite a bit more expensive than the traditional processes. And you're gonna to wanna to show that off or take advantage of it in some way and using these lattice structures is one way to do that. You could also make soft 3D printed objects like this using other processes. You could use inkjet printing, which would be a lot more expensive. You have to have greater consistency in the material that you're printing with so that it can go through those inkjets without clogging or having issues. Also, you're laying the material down like micro droplet by micro droplet, so building up a large object like this ends up being kind of expensive. You could also make something like this using a powder-based process like selective laser sintering or selective laser melting, where you're just kind of like starting with a powder and then you're building your object out of that. But any type of powder process usually ends up with like a sugar cube texture in the end. You can mitigate that using some vapor smoothing and get smooth surface finishes on here. But the fact that I can see some kind of rasterization here kind of indicates to me that this was built using a, uh, a resin-based process. I imagine this was built on a pretty large-scale industrial machine. A lot of hobby-based printers might be able to fit something like this on the build tray, um, but if you're gonna be mass-producing shoes like this, imagine you have a screen the size of, I don't know, like a 50-inch LCD panel that's normally used for a television. If you had something that big, you could fit like maybe 100 of these shoes on one build surface, and be cranking them out at like 100 shoes every 30 to 60 minutes. But that's not to say that you couldn't print something like this out on a machine at home. I actually would challenge someone to make something like this because I know we're always looking out for practical applications of 3D printing technology, and this would be a good one. Looking at the overall design of these shoes, I think they're quite stylish. That's gonna be subjective and based on your personal tastes and preferences, but I think they look kinda of cool, and it would be a great conversation starter if you knew someone that was into 3D printing and you're like, yo, check these out. Uh, it's, it's just kinda of neat and interesting. Now, one thing I noticed is that I have to wear socks with these. They just kinda of fit a little bit funny when I wear them without socks, and I just think that sandals look so much cooler when you wear socks with them. Plus the shape of this shoe doesn't fit my foot perfectly. Um, like my toe kind of comes off up here and kind of touches up here. But when I wear socks, it kind of pushes my foot back a little bit and uh, they fit perfectly when I wear socks. So that's just what we're dealing with there. So uh, there's a lot of opportunity for customization and flexibility in designing shoes like this, but these were kind of a one size fits all sort of thing. And they just fit me really well with socks on. You can also see they varied the density and spacing of the holes here. So in certain areas, there's more holes and other areas, there's more material to add extra support. In this arch area, you can see they actually went pretty sparse with the mesh just because they wanted to add a little more flexibility there. And aside from the smell, I had some other worries and concerns about wearing these shoes around. The first one was durability. So I think especially on the, the bottom area, I think this mesh is kind of thin. When you walk on a shoe, it flexes like this quite a bit. And that's gonna put this bottom surface in tension. So these are gonna be stressed uh, kind of along the length of the shoe. And that I think will eventually break these little kind of lattices down here. So I really would have liked to see a little bit more material on the bottom of this shoe. It might adversely affect comfort, but at the same time, the shoe is only gonna work as long as the bottom isn't completely worn down. So I'd like to see them add a little bit more material there. You might even go as far as making a full solid sheet on the bottom of the shoe 
So just print it out solid on the very bottom layer just to add some extra protection for the person wearing them and uh, add extra wear resistance so the shoes might last a little bit longer. But we'll get into durability testing as we wear these shoes out for a couple of days or a couple of weeks and just see how they hold up. My other concern is actually much more concerning. And uh, this was actually brought up by someone in the comments section. So thanks to everyone who leaves comments on my videos. It gives me a lot to think about. And after I read this comment, it really had me second guessing whether or not I should do this video. And the comment was, what happens if you step in poo? Uh, yeah, that's going to be a real concern here. Because you see this kind of meshy, hole-filled structure. If you step in some dog poo, or heaven forbid, if you're in San Francisco and you step in some primate poo, uh, yeah, that's going to be absolutely disgusting. I mean, all these little nooks and crannies where crap can get in there, literally. I would not want to be tasked with cleaning these up after an incident like that. That's something I got to look out for. As I wear these around town, I have to make sure I don't step in anything. And that brings up the question of other hazards. I mean, one of the main reasons we wear shoes is to protect us from the, the ground that we walk on. So if you step on like broken glass or needles or uh, sharp rocks, your shoes usually protect you. But this, you know, since you can see light through it, there's actually clear paths through the shoe. Again, you know, these aren't the most ideal form of footwear for foot protection you're definitely going to want to watch your step as you walk around in these things. Even basic hazards like a puddle or something, or like some spilled soda. If you step on that, that could seep through this mesh and get onto your socks or get onto your feet. So that's just kind of one of the downsides of this fully mesh-based pattern where things can just pass right through it. You kind of have to act as if you're barefoot. Don't rely on your shoes to protect you from anything because, yeah, just focus on foot placement and make sure you're not stepping into anything, whether that's glass, needles, puddles, or poo. All right, so I have actually been wearing these around for a while, um, and I want to share my experience with you. On my first day, I grabbed these shoes and was going to head to the airport. I was thinking, you know what, let me put these shoes through a proper test. I'm going to put them on and walk to the airport. It's going to be a full six hours of walking. We're going to be walking all over the place, indoors, outdoors, on unpaved trails, on sidewalks, streets, you name it. We'll just really put these through the ringer and see how they hold up. And then I realized, yeah, that's probably not the best idea. One, these shoes don't seem like they're really built for that. So, I mean, I'd be testing them more as if they're a hiking boot, not a casual pair of slides. And two, if they broke down on the first day, that wouldn't really give me a whole lot of experience to comment on. So I decided I would wear a normal pair of shoes until I got to the airport. And then when I got to the security line, I'd pop off my normal shoes and put these babies on. And uh, I think that was the right way to do it. Now, if you're not a frequent flyer or you're from some kind of other country that's not the United States, you might be asking, what do you mean you're putting these shoes on after the security line? Well, in the United States, we have something called the TSA the Transportation Safety Administration. We basically have to take our shoes off whenever we go to the airport because some guy tried to put a bomb in his shoe and light that off on a plane. So ever since then, we've all been taking our shoes off at the airport and it's been a tremendous pain in the butt. So I took my shoes off, went through the metal detector and you know, everything was good. And then instead of putting my old shoes back on, I put these slides on. And after putting them on for the first time, I was immediately not disappointed which is kind of a big deal for Creality products. I don't have any footage from the security line because uh, the TSA gets kind of pissy when you start filming them at the security checkpoints. Ask me how I know. But, you know, I wore them around the airport, checked out a couple of shops, walked on escalators, and you just, you know, give them a good run around. And I was quite impressed. I actually think they're ideal for this kind of usage. First of all, they're easy to take off and put on, so when you're going through the security checkpoint, you don't have to undo your shoelaces and tie them when you're done. You just slip them off, put them in the security belt. Also, in the airport, you're in a pretty well-controlled environment. You don't have to worry about a lot of the hazards that you might see in the city or walking around in a suburban neighborhood. There's no puddles, there's no poo, there's no broken glass. It's just like a nice environment for you to walk around in a comfy pair of shoes. Basically, it's just escalators, smooth tiling and commercial carpeting. If you walk around outdoors, you'll see a lot of asphalt and concrete, which might be kind of abrasive to relatively soft materials like this. But in an airport, you don't have to worry about any of that. But the things that really blew me away about these shoes is they're super breathable and they're super comfy. 
And I think that all comes down to the mesh pattern that they're using. So they're comfy because they're super squishy um, and it was very pleasant to walk around in. The fact that I can just kind of squish this shows you how soft this material is. Hands are much weaker than feet, if you didn't know. With socks on, you have a bit of extra padding, so it's a little bit more forgiving if there were any kind of hot spots where your feet would rub against this or cause blisters. But I'm glad to say that even without socks on, there's no hot spots here. They're super comfy and you could probably wear them around all day without issues. There's a lot of little details to make these more comfortable and ergonomic. The footbed is kind of sculpted to the way that your foot is shaped. And there's a little bit of extra material here, giving you a little bit of extra cushion where your heel touches down. And uh, they bend nice and easy up front here. So just overall a well-designed shoe. And the breathability on these shoes is really on another level. Now there are other shoes that are made out of equally soft and squishy foams. Like a normal pair of flip-flops is usually made out of a foam material. Actually this is even squishier than that. And also it's incredibly breathable because instead of having a closed cell foam that doesn't let any air through, or even an open cell foam that has really small pores, these large pores allow tons of air to just flow straight through these shoes. So it's almost as if you're barefoot. You're not gonna have any issues with like sweat or moisture building up in your shoes because the air just flows right through these and you know, it's equivalent to walking around barefoot or just with socks on. I'd go as far as to say that the single biggest advantage of having these 3D printed shoes is the incredible breathability of these 3D printed mesh patterns. So you could wear these around all day without having to worry about sweaty feet. I was on airplanes and at the airport for a long time just with these just chilling on my feet and I didn't have to worry about you know, any sweat or discomfort. And this is especially good on long flights because you don't wanna be that person that takes your shoes off on the plane. That's just kind of gross. I've seen people take their shoes off, takes their socks off, and then walk to the bathroom, and then walk back, and it's like, ah oh man. People, when you're on a plane and it's kind of shaking around, they might not have the best aim, and you're just walking in there with your bare feet and then going back and putting your feet up on things. It's like, ah. If you are one of those barefoot airplane people, I'm sorry for the people around you. Please drop me a comment on why you think that's a normal or okay thing to do or uh, how you came to become that way. I'm genuinely curious. Just wearing them around in public, I felt like they were kind of cool. Nobody else is gonna have a pair of shoes like this. I don't have a particularly well-developed fashion sense and it's highly subjective what you think is fashionable. But the kids these days, they really like their slides and these are pretty unique slides. I think they're pretty cool. I feel like having 3D printed shoes gives you like another level of nerd cred. You know, you've got your pocket protector with a slide rule in it, you got your safety glasses, you got your, uh, you know, Hawaiian shirt, whatever you have to let people know that you're a man of mathematics and engineering. Having 3D printed shoes just takes that to the next level. And you get incredible bonus points if you have 3D printed sandals with socks. I mean, it doesn't get any cooler than that. So that's about all I have to say about these. This has just been my first couple of days wearing these. Overall, I'm pretty impressed and I thought it was just gonna be kind of a gimmick, but actually they're pretty cool. And that breathability is just, uh, I think that's really the best part about these 3D printed shoes. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you wanna catch the update video. I think I'll do kind of a series about these because I just really like them. All right, if you made it this far into the video, you're awesome. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode.